These are our top added features to the Final Fantasy VII Remake. The added cutscenes. We're starting with the most obvious change. Back when Final Fantasy VII first came out, we were presented with an incredible story about a group of people trying to save the world. By adding fully voiced cutscenes, along with sprinkling some Square Enix magic to make them look amazing, the story somehow becomes even better. You truly see how the characters feel about the whole situation. The characters' emotions are now exposed, and my god is to make it hard not to bond with these guys. Like I now have a newfound love for Cloud, Barrett, Tifa, and Eren. I don't know, there's just something about watching these characters interact and talk that just makes the whole experience feel so much better. The extra plot. Okay, so I'm not sure if you know, but this FF7 remake only covers about half of the original story. However, Square promised that the game is still the same length. How is that possible? With a whole bunch of extra plot. What I love about all this extra story content is that none of it feels like filler. Like for example, there's this mission where you have to help Jesse rob a Shinra facility. This mission allows you to actually learn about the people in Avalanche outside of Barrett and Tifa. You get some sweet character development with Jesse Biggs and Wedge, along with the most anime boss battle ever with a new character named Roche. I finished that mission feeling completely fulfilled, and there are so many more of them. This makes me happy that they only focus on half of the game for this remake. Now Square can give us all the world and character development they want through all these really fun quests. The weapon upgrade system. Now let's get to the mechanics. The weapon upgrade system in FF7 is everything. In this game, you don't just rely on your base stats and materia to boost your combat skills. You can also use SP to give your weapons incredible buffs. These range from attack buffs, added materia slots, elemental buffs, and so much more. This allows you to take on enemies in a bunch of different ways. Thanks to the weapon system, old weapons will remain useful. You can use the upgrades to make different builds for your characters. Maybe you want to make Cloud a magical tank, or maybe you want to turn Tifa into a combo goddess, like I did. The freedom that you have with building these characters just makes you want to continue grinding and finding more weapons and materia. Just don't get lost in it. I wasn't paying attention and accidentally spent 10 hours straight with this game. The grind can be addictive. The battle system. And last, we have one of the biggest changes to the original Final Fantasy VII. Though some people immediately missed the turn-based system from the original, when Square first showed the FF7 battle system, I fell in love with it quickly. It feels like a mix of all the good parts of Final Fantasy XV and the XIII systems. It's active so I'm in complete control of my characters, and I can switch between the characters in my party who all play differently. Like Cloud is a damage dealer who relies on well-timed counters to deal immense damage. Tifa is an aggressive attacker who relies on building more through extended combos. And Barry is a simple long-range character who can work as a tank as well. I'm currently at the Don Corneo part of the game, and so far, each major battle has been very fun. The active battle system just makes each situation way more intense, and as I continue to figure it out, it just gets me more and more excited to see how this game is going to recreate the Sephiroth fight. Those were our top added features from the Final Fantasy VII Remake. If we missed yours, let us know in the comments below. Hey, thank you so much for watching. If you want to be a gameologist, click down here to subscribe. If you want to see more episodes, click on the video on the left. And for more shows, click on the right. Sounds easy, right? See you next time. Bye!